So a lot of things can happen to us in life that um, seem, seem to be negatives, but God has a promise that he will use it for your greater good. If, if, and there are conditions to it, he'll use it if you love him and are called according to his purpose, meaning that the greatest good that will come out of any experience that you have is as you pursue God, as you pursue his will, as you pursue his purpose for you and for that circumstance to unfold. And I think you could break it into two categories. One uh, is the the sanctifying work of any experience in your own personal life, the way that it develops your relationship with God, develops you into more of a Christ-like person. Um, and then the other aspect is how we love others. So any situation, you know, how, how and, it, and they're not exclusive, you know, that, that if you're growing in your relationship with God and in your character and your holiness, then you're going to naturally be able to love others better. But circumstances I've seen there are a lot of times when something will happen that will uh, enable us to love somebody um, in that moment or through that experience right then and there. For example, today I was, I was uh, getting food for a food pantry and I was in Sprouts, but I, was, I had my doors open as I was bringing out these boxes to put in my car, and I had music going. I turned off my car and was just, you know, playing music. And uh, when I went, got in the car to drive away, the car battery was dead. So I was turning it over, and at that time, this guy was bringing food into the into the Sprouts on an 18 wheeler and he was ringing the doorbell ringing the bell in the back for delivery and he heard that I was my car was not um, turning over so he asked if I needed a jump and I said I did so I pushed my car back to where his truck was and he gave me a jump and in the process was able to say to him Lester his name is you know Lester can I pray for you and after he said no because he thought I said can I pay you he he said yes and after praying for him I got to do a dialogue with him God's been convicting me recently about that that not don't just pray for somebody I mean there's obviously incredible power in prayer but also you know to really dialogue with the person love them enough if they want to talk and he did he had time on his hands to to talk and I was actually late for worship but and, and late to deliver these this food in my eyes late um, but but really stayed in the spirit and asked the Lord, should I stay or should I just say I got, I got to run? Um, and that's critical in any given time to to really ask the Lord for guidance in regards to timing. Um, I, I hesitate because even this morning I was talking with somebody and you know knew I had to do this service project this service and I was a little late for that but but waited but really you know stopped and asked the spirit you know should I continue this dialogue or should I end it so I think that's consistent the timing in our lives that we can feel the pressure of different things in our lives and we need to combat that by being still in the moment and saying okay Lord what is your will for this what is your desire I'm not saying being late for an appointment with somebody necessarily but in this circumstance it was neither of the things that had I you know given my word that I'd be there at, at exactly a specific time so I dialogue with Lester about his life and about his job and his wife and how he wanted another job local trucking where his wife lived in Arizona so they didn't have to be away from her for so long and how his children were in Michigan and he hadn't seen his grandchildren before um, and and I got into his children and how they, he had three children that were out of wedlock that none of his three children uh, were married um, but had you know amongst the three of his children had three uh, children of their own so he had three grandchildren <laughs> and sorry it's complicated but <laughs> not really I think you're following me so I uh, got to know him and was able to kind of encourage him to ask the spirit to guide him in his next steps that God knew the desires of his heart and and uh, that it was good that he would be with his wanted to be with his grandchildren and see his grandchildren and so really pressed in um, we really encouraged him to press in to ask God because I asked him if he had faith and he said he did uh, but it was really neat because he had he, he had a kind of an epiphany where he said you know I think God 
really was is uh, teaching me a lesson here because I really didn't ask him. I really didn't, you know, get his wisdom in regards to taking the job that I, I was currently at, that he had currently was currently at. So it was neat to be able to to um, see how the lack of you know the battery not starting was used by God, and uh, I'm not saying that God. And the, the sovereignty debate in regards to how awesome God is and His sovereignty and, and how nothing happens to us outside of God's sovereign will, meaning that He, he filters everything and, and you know He is the only one that ultimately allows anything to happen. Um, but, you know, obviously it's not His will that wicked things happen. My, my emphasis here, though, is that no matter what happens to you, no matter what occurs, God wants to use it to grow you closer to Him and to help you to grow in your ability and your desire, passion to love others. So Lord, we thank you for the for the power that is in us. Lord, thank you for giving us peace in the storm. Lord, help us to be still when things are going on around us that don't seem right, that we'd see that you're working through those things for our greater good. That we'd stay fixed on you, press into you, and get excited for what you're doing through the trauma, through the hardship, through the suffering. As you're a good God and your promises endure forever. They never fail. We lift up Lester to you. Bless him. Enable him to be with his wife more, to see his grandchildren. Open the door for a job that better suits his family. Lord, comfort him and encourage him to go to you, that he would hear your voice, that he hear you, Holy Spirit, as you lead him. In Jesus' name, amen.